Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, how to use uh, CCP, Carrier and Convoy Planner. From here on out, I'll call it CCP. And uh, we're going to cover uh, this particular version, which is uh, 1 1.3.2.7. Now, this is something that's been developed by uh, the folks at FSX at War. They're calling it the unofficial uh, tech pack companion, and it's a uh, it's a great thing. They're developing campaign engine to to allow us to have more realistic military flying sessions. And uh, in the meantime, they, they haven't released that portion yet, but they've released the first part of their project, which is the CCP, and that's what we're going to cover today. Let's get the objectives out of the way. We're going to learn how to use and configure each portion of the CCP. We're also going to learn how to launch in single player mode, which is easy, and how to use it in multiplayer mode, which includes uh, also uh, starting up on a carrier. Why do we care? So it will allow us to create realistic mission scenarios so if you fly on a server with a bunch of guys, it is uh, really nice to be able to reproduce uh, scenarios. It's good for training and learning. So we use it in mission planning and target practice. And you'll see it's great to create a bunch of targets. So there's some prerequisite. Obviously it's a tech pack, uh, unofficial tech pack companion. So we need tech pack. So I didn't put it in there, it's kind of obvious. Uh, we're going to need to install FSU, FSU IPC4. Or you get an error when you try to get on a carrier. So you don't need to register it. You don't need to buy something new. You just download it, install it, and tell them not to register. And you're, you're good. You're good to go. That's all that's required. And patience. This is an effort in development. The guys are very talented. And they're like you and me that this is a hobby that they're working on and, and not their full-time job. And if you want to help them, uh, you can register on fsxwar.com and report bugs when you find them. And here's uh, my recommendation to report bugs. When reporting an issue, make sure you provide a way to replicate the issue so they're able to try to replicate at their end and see what's actually going on so they can fix it. And the more we report, actual issue that we find, the more they can fix and the better product will be for us in the end. And provide any logs you can, event logs, if you know if you know how, or they may ask you for a very specific piece of information. The interface, this is what it looks like. So you'll see all kinds of uh, different tabs here, boat, ground, airplanes, so you can put in static and flying uh, static boats, uh, static ground target, moving boats, moving ground targets, and moving airplanes. There's a tack pack portion which uh, uh, integrated parts of the uh, TPS files. So if you've watched my video on the TPS files, and if you watch my video on GPS coordinates, you're going to be king here. You're going to be able to modify things to your liking, and it gonna be, it's going to become uh, second nature to you. And lastly, the monitor tab is where we put all these configurations we make in the end and, and load them up. So without further ado, let's take a look at this, uh, this wonderful product and see how it all works. Okay, before we start, I would like to take a look at the uh, interface just to kind of get us situated. Now there's a boat interface and the way it essentially works is you can create naval task. You can create. Uh, you need to create naval task. I should say, which is a formation of boats. And that formation of boats, you need to create a path where it's going to be going. So we're going to create a static and one that moves. And then once you created those those two items, you add them into the FSX. And option. And you have an option here if you have a carrier to start on a carrier. Now the ground portion works identical. 
the create a convoy which is a column of tanks or vehicles and then you create a route for them to go on either as a static item or a moving item then you add a convoy to FSX so it sounds very familiar to the previous now airplane park works almost the same except they change the interface look a little bit so they use a photoreal map here and you can change if you had how it's treated in feet or in meters. Now here you can actually look for a city and it will bring you to that region. So if I look for Norfolk for example, if I can type and it brings me directly to Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, you have an import GPX here. Uh, that's basically if you have a a uh, flight path uh, that you created already then you can actually import it here when you create a path a naval path or or a flight path or a ground path it creates gpx files so that's why they say import gpx you have an option also to clear uh, all the waypoints that you created as you if you start creating i didn't select anything yet but if you start creating a waypoint then it will actually if you uh, you have a list of waypoints that you can clear if you don't like what you have now OBB we will be talking about those but OBBs are basically a, a combination of your your actual formation and your path combined the two of them together gives you an OBB so once you created a for example let's say if I create a flight path and I pick a plane to fly the flight path I now have a combination of uh, an object and a path and it will be saved as an OBB so I can bring the OBB back and I have that path and that plane every time I bring it up so it's important to name it correct uh, name it in a way that you'll remember what it is so you can reuse it and you have defaults that you can set so if you don't change those that's what it's going to create as a default for you now the start time is very important and uh, we're going to be discussing this but it's all in GMT and it's uh, it has to be synced with your the GMT time on your FSX. So as long as you, if for example, if I tell it to start at twelve ten, then ten minutes after I launch my uh, FSX, it will start. And finally, the tack pack portion looks very identical to the airplane, and what it allows you to do is add. TPS items. So if you've done my TPS uh, uh, video, that will look very familiar to you and what the what the options are. The rest of the face looks very much the same. And the one thing they add in the tag pack is a photo real object. So it allows you to take an empty target, and you have different type. You have circle, rectangles, and squares of different size, and you can put it over an actual photo real object. So for example, you could go here and start looking into here. You say, let's say I want to bomb. I want to bomb something that's in here. So you see this, uh, these items here. So you could create a target, put one of those on here. And what it will do for you is that when you fly over it and you put a bomb on it, it will explode just like, a re uh, it, just like if it was a target that was added in. So it gives you the, the ability to bomb anything in the photo real map. Additionally, what it does is when you create objects in here, it will pick the first six objects uh, that you created and put it into an MU that you can go get from the mission folder. So it will create a TPS file and an MU in the mission folder of your CCP. And we'll, we'll go through that later on. And finally, monitor. Monitor is where everything that you create in boat, ground, airplanes, uh, not tack pack because that's TPS file, but everything you create in here, you need to, when you can send it to FSX, it will actually show up here. Because all the items that will be started and the time that it will start, uh, you can choose to let it create uh, the AIs X amount of minutes before it starts. Uh, I usually, like to put that to zero and put it so it starts when I tell it to start and 
also what you can do is uh, there's delays. You can delays uh, plus or minus. You can give it delays between things so that uh, it kind of randomizes. So this is it in a nutshell, and this is where you'll look at your objects as they are uh, it interacting with your FSX session. So that's the that's the actual interface in a nutshell. And now we're gonna go down to the nitty gritty and do a static boat and dynamic boat. Boat that we're gonna join on the carrier. And then we'll do a static ground and dynamic ground. And after that we will do a, an airplane with a flight path with a bit of a twist. And then I'll, I'll go through that, the tech pack portion. So hang tight and we're going to start with creating a static boat. Okay, so let's create a uh, static boat formation. So the first thing we want to do is create an able task. So it simply means that all we have to do is bring in some objects and we'll be able to, to take those objects and put them wherever, wherever we like. And let's see here. Let's take uh, an object here. We're going to wait till it paints up and then we can add it. And remember the number, uh, the, the speed, it has a 30. I don't want it to move, so I'm going to make everything zero. In fact, I'm going to change my default speed to zero here, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to add another add a marker, wait till it paints. There we go. And we're going to add some Corvettes. I'll add two of them. Okay, and now I have a formation done. So once you have your formation done in the boat area, you can actually go and define their position. So this here is our carrier, so number two. So when we click on define, and you click on them, you, you get the numbers. So number two is my carrier. And I'll just have it bracketed by other ships. Now, you can actually mouse wheel in here and zoom in. So you can get very precise. It is in meter. So for those who don't know how to convert meters, it's basically divide by three and that will give you the amount of feet. Uh, multiply by three, I would say. So one meter is about three feet. Okay, so that will do for us. And once you have your your selection made, you click on validate. And now we want to save our bolt pattern. So it is static. So I'm going to save my bolt pattern and call it uh, static Soviet formation. Now that I have it created, I can recall that Soviet formation at any time and use it. So now we're going to create a naval path. So we have a map here and we have to decide where we want to put it. So I'm going to find where I want to create it. Okay, so if you've seen the DARE range before, I have that in my other videos. So what you do to create an able path, you right click to create waypoints wherever you want them. Now the static one you're going to say is not moving, right? One waypoint should be enough. Well, they had an issue where for whatever reason it needs two waypoints. So just create another one anywhere. And then that will, that's your static. Uh, We'll use that for our static. Now you could import an existing uh, path that you created and change it around. Or you could clear by clearing waypoints. But once you create the waypoint, you want to save it. So I'm going to say here. Static there lake. That's what I call it, uh, that piece of water. So 
that's my path here. So now we created a formation. We have our path. Then we're going to add it to FSX. Now remember the bolt formation we created. So we're going to go and get that. That heavy static Soviet formation. Now naval path was just created, which was a static there lake. See the, the extension GPX. Now here we're going to give it a name. Now you want to make sure you give it a name that is uh, that is descriptive because whatever name you inst in enter here will save as a file once we add it to FSX. And what happens is it saves a file with that name and those extensions here are obb.xml. So that uh, next time you open the boat section you can actually recall this formation and this route with this file name by choosing it here. So we don't have one here, but, but you'll see it in the, as we progress in the video, it will be there. So here I'm going to put static Soviet formation their lake. Okay. Now important here, when we wanted to do to start a GMT start a GMT time. In our case, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're not trying to join on the carrier, so we don't need it to be stationary. As soon as I start my FSX, I want the boat to be there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's static. So, but just for the sake of uh, making the time different, we'll just uh, add one minute after my start time, which was 12 o'clock uh, GMT. So now you add. Now if we add it to FSX. So if you look at monitor we see that we have our formation here. And it's five vehicles, and it's going to be going starting at that time. OK. So now that we have that started, all we have to do at this point, since we have the monitor, is just start the actual formation, uh, start our, our FSX, sorry. And then it will put that formation exactly where we want it. So we're going to connect to FSX. But first, let me just show you what I was talking about earlier. So see here, now that we created this formation, if I wanted to run it later, it is here. It created a file so I could create it and put it into my FSX as a, uh, a formation already configured. So once you configure it, if you name it, uh, so that you recognize it, you can reuse those configurations over and over. All you have to do at that point is just set the time and go. So now we're going to uh, take a look at what it looks like on FSX. So the first thing you want to do is you load your FSX. And then you want to connect to FSX. Now to disable pause in FSX is so that uh, you don't pause the whole CCP and whatnot. You can uncheck that if you want, but this way it ensures that if you pause, it doesn't pause the whole um, simulation. Notice it says Bob. I'm using a Bob, which is a freeware uh, from Orbex, which will allow me to uh, navigate around and uh, go look at the objects that we created. Okay, so now we're, that took us to where the formation is, and you can see here. If you look in the monitor tab, that we have our ships that were created, and they are stationary, zero decimal whatever speed, so that's pretty much not moving. And that's how you monitor your your actual formation in the monitor section of FSX of uh, CCP. Sorry. So now let's take a look at the formation. This is a formation we created, and. It is, in fact, stationary and not doing anything. And we could spend a lot of time just to go look at it. It looks pretty cool. But just to show you that it does work, and it puts it exactly where you want to. And uh, that's how you do static Now, boat. I'm going to create a moving formation of ships. And we're going to join on the carrier in this case here. I won't make you sit through the creating of the fleet and all that stuff because we've just created an aesthetic one and the routes it works identical so what I'll do uh, what I want to do though is uh, point out uh, something that's uh, that you need to know 
So in here, when you select your boats, in my case, I'm going to select the Nimitz. And let me find it here. I want to point out something. I'm going to change the default speed. One thing I want to point out is you'll notice here, it should show up in here. It hasn't done it so yet, but there it is. Now you'll see here there's a CV underscore one and there's other variations of this uh, carrier. And these here correlate, if you look in the root folder, and in my case, the root folder for my CCP is FSX war, because that's what I, I chose. In the root folder, there's a PA file. The PA file actually stands for uh, short, uh, short form for porte avion in French, which means uh, aircraft carrier. If you look in it, you'll see that all these carriers are defined with positions where you can get on. Uh, one thing I'm not sure, I see that the, the, they have uh, uh, what, what appears to be TACAN channels. But uh, I just want to point out here that the CV61 underscore uh, 1 shows up here and it has this TACAN. So it would take a little bit of experimentation to figure out what, if uh, they have the TACAN working. It didn't work in previous uh, version or the earlier version. The TACAN was not working on the formation. but it would appear that they have TACAN uh, frequencies here. So there's some notes in here, and there's some guys uh, that are contributing to these things, like uh, you'll see on CC CCP forum, a bunch of guys are contributing uh, additional positions, and they've actually fixed uh, the Kitty Hawk in this version here, and the CV6 you can, you can get on a spawn on now. So just so that you're aware, the PA.CFG file, and you see the different variations that are available when you look at that drop down menu. So just want to make you aware that that exists so that if you need to look at it and work out something, then you'll see it. So I'm going to create uh, the formation and create the path and then I'll come back and uh, show you what it looks like and we'll start on a carrier. Okay, so I went ahead and created a moving uh, ship formation that uh, did the same step that we did prior with the static uh, ships, except the naval path. I created multiple paths to where I wanted to go. So now it's time to add our formation into FSX. So I created the formation here, moving Nimitz formation. I've created a path. I called it leaving Dare County heading east. And I gave it a name. And this is the name that I gave it, Nimitz Formation, leaving Dare County heading east. So I can use this, and it, it gives me the combination that I created. Now I'm going to set the time uh, to GMT 05, because five minutes is enough for me to join on a carrier. And I'm going to add my formation to FSX. Now if I look in the monitor, here's my formation. Now I'm going to go back here. I want to tell it that I want to start on a carrier. So here I need to tell it which position I'm going to assume here. So once you click on here, it gives you the ability to choose a position. And in my case, I will choose uh, position. Yeah, that's Pick uh, position one, it gives us the best view. And you click validate your choice. And now you're ready to go. So we're going to join, we're going to start FSX. And we'll, we'll actually, uh, it should put us on the carrier. Now you'll notice here in the description, it says 404 waypoint. I did not add 404 waypoints. So what I did is I put waypoints where I needed them and uh, the uh, CCP added itself waypoints in between so it can control the, the change of direction better. Okay, so we're ready to start our uh, actual dynamic uh, moving ships. And two things I want to point out. First thing is that we have starting a carrier at the position that we selected. 
and it's checked. And this create AI before minutes, I put it to zero. If it kind of had some uh, another variable that could cause issues, so if it defaults at five, if I had 1205 and five here, it would be a hit and miss. So I just put it to zero. This way I don't have to worry about it for a little bit of time ahead of uh, the time that I have set up and it's good. As long as you have enough time for everybody to join in. So if you have a large group, you probably want to give yourself more time than five minutes. In this case, it's just me. So five minutes work. So let's uh, first connect to FSX. And we're looking for a green square here. Okay, we do have a green square and our objects loaded. So let's go ahead and start our flight. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. So as you see, put us in the carrier, and uh, we'll get we'll go we'll go around and fly and see not fly but uh, I will slow so we can see the formation. So started us on the carrier, and if we look at the uh, the actual fleet here, this is the fleet I selected. So I have a helicopter watching the launches, and I have some ships all around following the, the formation here. And it's ready to sail up to sea. So after five minutes, my actual fleet will start following my waypoints all the way out to sea and uh, heading east. So that's it for the actual moving boats. And the next step for us is to create a formation and uh, with trucks and tanks and create some nice uh, moving targets. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create uh, some ground uh, vehicles. So here, the principle is the same. You add your, your vehicles and it gives you a list. You can select the amount of vehicles you want to select, uh, that you want to add the default speed. If you want it static, you change it to zero. If you want it to move, you put 20 or whatever speed you want, miles per hour that it can do. And once same as the previous with the boats, you save your column instead of a formation and it puts a uh, column of vehicle. So I've created those already and I have created a moving and a non-moving uh, group. Now, when you create the route, it's a little bit different. Uh, you have two different tabs here. The PBF, those are predetermined uh, maps that are created. And if you look here, FSX at War has created two of them. And if you go to those maps, you can actually uh, find uh, uh, routes that are predefined. You can just select along what they have defined. And that's part of their or if it's at war effort, there's just uh, stuff that's predetermined. But for our purpose today, we're actually going to create it from scratch. You can also find a city here. So let's say I put, uh, uh, they must have a map before. So this here, if, if you had a map selected here, you could find the city. So if I was to go this map here and So you could find, see how you could find Tripoli, and then you could, uh, uh, cr you could go and actually start making some uh, some waypoints. But for what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a photo reel portion for what we want to do. And the way you create uh, you create waypoints is very simple. You just go to the locations that you want. And it works the same, right? You just uh, find your location and if you watch my videos, I use uh, the Dare range quite a bit. So I've used uh, the South Dare range for the example I'm going to point out, but just the uh, same way. You right click and it creates waypoints for you. And then once you're done, you save your route and it creates a PBX file the same as everything else. So I'm going to quit here because I've already created mine. So once you have your 
convoys created and you have your routes created, then you can go in FSX and add them. So just to show you, I've created 10 tanks and eight moving vehicles. I've also created uh, moving around the dare range as a path and I've created a static dare range as a path as well. And I created, the, I gave him uh, some meaningful names. So what that means is I can load those combinations directly from here. So I'm going to set the time to 1202 because I don't need to wait very long here. Zero 02, there we go. I'm going to load, load my first convoy. 10 static tanks. Okay. And I have those static tanks. I will add them. And they are in the monitor. So now I'll go back to my ground vehicle and I will add my second convoy at the same time. And this one here is going to be eight moving vehicles on the south there range. I'll add it to the monitor. And now you see in monitor that I have my vehicles and the speed. This one is static and this one's moving 20 miles per hour around the south there range. So the next step for you to do is I recommend this, you don't have to, but it avoids uh, issues for me anyway. Now you have a delay here, so you plus, uh, minus and plus 20 second delay between the vehicles. It kind of randomizes how the vehicles move and make it look more realistic. I generally do not touch this. Uh, next thing to do, just like we did with the ships, you connect to FSX and you wait for the green square to appear. And once the green square appears, you're good to go. But in order for that to take place, you have to have FSX running in the background. So I have loaded Bob, which is a Orbex, uh, Orbex uh, freeware. It allows you to walk around and look at things. So we're going to take a look at uh, what we've created. Okay, we are back. I'm on the south there range. And as you see here, you can tell uh, that I have my 10 tanks. And you see them kicking dust and they're idling. So those are the tanks, and let's go see if we can find our, our moving vehicles. So I had a column of eight vehicles, and it was along the dare range here. So I'm going to see if I can capture them. Okay, I see the dust here. They haven't started moving yet. They will start moving at uh, 12.02 GMT. I got all those vehicles here waiting, those eight vehicles waiting to go. And if we take a look at our monitor, this should be starting to move at any time now. So that's the uh, that's the vehicles, uh, the ground convoys in a nutshell. The next thing we're going to create is a, a flight of two and flying over the dare range. So we've looked at this uh, interface earlier. So I'll put the search for the location near where I want to to be and hit enter and it puts a nice little uh, pin where I need to where I want to go so now I'm going to zoom into where I want to to do my flight path so the way this works is you select the plane and then you select the flight path that you want to do for the first plane. So I'm going to pick some TU-95, so I'll make it uh, default to 200 knots so we can see it coming. And I'll make it fly 300 feet so we can see them uh, as my default. And I'll start it at uh, 1202 again, just like I did with the uh, other ships, uh, with the, the formation, I mean. And I'm going to pick an airplane and in this case here, I chose the TU-95. Let me find it here. I chose a prop plane because it's easier. It's it's larger. It'd be easier for us to see. So you see that it provides you with a list of your of your planes here. So I'll pick the TU-95 AI. And when this here comes up, just click set. I'm not sure what those variables do and what you can change, but uh, I click set. 
and it's something to explore. So you wait till the image loads. Now we have the the TU95, the Russian bear, ready to rock and roll for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it start here. So you right click just the same as you would in any other uh, in the, in the, just like you would in the other maps. So I started from the north range and I'm going to make it go straight to here. I'm going to make a middle point here and a point here. And then I'm going to make it turn gently here. And I want it to line up with my range here so I can see them. We're going to be standing in front of the North there range. So I want to be able to see them. So in theory, if all works well at 300 feet, we should be able to see them. So now notice the lat long here cannot be changed. The speed can and the altitude can. So I'm going to start at 5,000 feet here. And I will make it go down here, waypoint 2, waypoint 4. So the first one that I want to be at 300 is at waypoint 5. So I'm gradually bring it down. You remember that it needs to fly to these uh, these waypoints, and it tries to hit what you what you have. So if, if you put it outside the envelope, it may not work as expected. So waypoint 5 want to be at 300. So now we do have our flight path for this Russian bear here. So we're going to save the OOB. Notice it says OOB. So that means it saves the combination of the path and the plane together. So let's uh, let's save that OOB and we'll call it uh, TU95 and we'll call it number one because it's the first plane we're creating. Fly over their range. Now you can see how you can create uh, caps from this. Okay, so we have this one selected and created. The next thing we need to do is we make sure we have our correct time. Add to the monitor. So if we go to monitor, we have our TU-95, number one, fly over their range. Now, we wanted to add a second plane. So here's how we do it. So pick a plane again. We're going to pick a TU-95 once again. Okay, in this case here, we're going to click on import GPX. When we created our OOB, it created a, a GPX file, a path file for us. So I'm going to set my time here to 12.02 is when I want it to start. And I'm going to import the GPX that I want. And in theory, I don't have to worry about the altitude because it's already in my flight path. Uh, the speed should already be part of my flight path, but let's see. We'll see if it changes it. So I will import my GPX here. Do you want to replace uh, altitude by default value? No, nope. I want to keep what I had. So if you look, it has the same altitude that I had set before, right? And it has the uh, the Russian bear AI here because that's what I put in here. Now we'll save this one as number two. I save it and then I add it to monitor. If I go into monitor, I now have two flights. Now the same, it works identical to what we've done before. So I create, I, I make sure that I change this to zero because it doesn't have the five minutes that it would need to create the AI before. So I can't make it create before I can join. It will likely not work. Same process. You connect to FSX. And you've got to make sure FSX is running. And then you wait for the green square. There. So now we're now ready to go. 
we just have to fire up our FSX and I will do so. I will go fire up the FSX and see how accurate the flight, flight path is and uh, we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I am now uh, over the North Air range and I've actually uh, started my FSX simulation. And as you see, the two Russian bearers, the TU-95s, have actually loaded and they're starting to fly. Notice how they have different speed and uh, the modeling is different. So they're heading uh, almost uh, southerly here and they should be coming back towards us and we should see them flying. Uh, I have my Bob here and I'm in uh, slew mode and notice how it uh, tells me what altitude I'm at. So I'm going to lower it a little bit here and get to where I can see the plane. Okay, so I've put an in inlay window here so you can see the Russian bear here. It's currently over the south range. It's just adjusting its path and if you look in the, the screen here, you can see that the, the one aircraft is coming towards us. And in the distance behind it, uh, although hard to see, we are seeing that the second plane is actually coming our way. So I'm going to line here so we can see it. So it's coming straight for us. And this is essentially how you set up your planes. And as you can see, it can have a lot of uh, usefulness for us. We can actually set up caps and uh, all kinds of different things. So there that plane went, and now the second one is coming. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can do, uh, just gotta remember that uh, you, you want to stay within the flight envelope, so otherwise it won't be able to keep up to where you want it to go. So be mindful of that when you actually program it and, uh, and set it up. And this is how you do airplanes. So the next uh, portion we're going to look at is going to be the tag pack. And, and if you've actually seen my video on, uh, on the GPS coordinates and the TPS files, you're going to be very, you're going to find this very easy and uh, useful. So I'll see you in the, the next Let's part. Let's look at the tag pack portion. Now, if you watch my video on TPS files, everything has seemed very uh, familiar to you. Uh, the interface works very similar to the airplane one. From the mapping standpoint, you can search for a city. And hit enter and it will give you a city. And there's uh, objects here. So if you watch my TPS uh, video and my uh, video on GPS coordinates, you, this will become very easy for you. So uh, the limitations are 100 AI aircraft, 100 AI boats, but the boats will, will not show up in multiplayer. And it doesn't matter because you have boats with CCP. One drone, one tanker, one carrier, 10 SAM sites, and photoreal objects. I will show you what that is. That is a very clever thing that the guys from FSX at war have done. So let's start uh, by adding uh, just uh, one target of each, just so you could get a feel for it. And this photo reel is great. You can put it exactly where you want it. So let's start with a AI aircraft. And I'm gonna pick one here. Now one thing to be careful of, if you get some of those high res aircraft, it might end up uh, it might end up uh, affecting your frame rate. So just be aware of that. Now here I'm going to add this plane here. I'm going to give it uh, basically zero, zero feet. And it's kind of nice that it did it in feet because when you use a TPS, it uses uh, meters, but it's a matter of preference. So I'll make it face uh, north, zero degrees, and it's going to go at zero knots because we're going to have it on the ground. If you're going to have moving planes, you're better off using CCP airplanes. And now that we have that, all we have to do is select where we want it. And I'm going to put my plane right here. So notice how it made an entry for us. So now we can go and uh, let's add a boat. We'll add a boat in here. Now this here, notice here, the positioning, you cannot change the positioning. You can change the heading. 
and interestingly enough you can't delete either but you could clear all waypoints and then they will they would all disappear so let's do a boat sample AI boat and let's uh, put a nice uh, nice size boat here and let's try this one here Kuznetsov Kuznetsov and we'll put it on on here that, that doesn't look like a boat there we go now it's an AI boat I'm gonna set it at zero knots I want it to stay in place and a heading of 180 Now all I have to do is pick where I want to put it. Now the thing with those boats and those planes, you can add speed to them and altitude for the plane, but it will go in a straight line. Now the drone, now here the drone, you can uh, set it up anywhere as you like. I'm gonna set it up here, let's say, I'm gonna say uh, 5,000 feet and a heading of, uh, Three five zero at three hundred knots, and the behavior. If you look in your in your drone selection in your menu, uh, the behavior you select it's an index number. So the first listed will be zero. The next one is one. The the next one is two, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna select zero I don't remember which behavior that is it, it could be flying straight and level so now we will pick right here and add it you must first select category and object oh huh. oh I did not select the drone stupid me okay now we have the drone put in the next one is the tanker and we're going to be putting the tanker near where the uh, the boat was because we're going to put the, let's say here KC-135 tanker is what I want to put okay pick a team I'll pick team 2 default speed I'll use a default tag can so now I'm covering here in my TPS video but uh, the tag can frequency here if you look in your uh, in your help file, it has a translation of uh, what the frequencies are for which tag can. So this one, I believe, is uh, uh, it might be 57 X-ray. I'm not sure, but it wants the frequency here and not the actual tag can, uh, the tag can channel. Now the true heading will make it go 360, or let's put 350. And the orbit type, that's the one that if you want to use NATOPS, where it's 15 miles and it turns, it's zero. But you can check your selection. The first listed is index zero. The next one is index one, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's add right here. So I get the tanker at this position here. Now the next one is a carrier. And I'll pick our trusted Nimitz. And we'll make this one go. So as it comes up here. I'm using a default, but here the point of defense, if you wanted to shoot people that are not on the, on team two, in this case here, you would set a one here, but since you don't want it to shoot, we're gonna set it to zero. The speed will make it go at 30 knots. And uh, the true heading, so let's put it uh, towards the 90 because I don't want it to, it's gonna run aground eventually, but we're not gonna run it anyway. So let's put, uh, let's say 90 degrees. Okay, now let's add it at the exact same point as uh, the other one. So this way the tanker will orbit the uh, carrier. And lastly, SAM sites. We can have a whole bunch of SAM sites, up to 10. 
So that's kind of neat here. So let's select SAM site. Okay. Now you're going to notice there's many different ones here. This here constitute one SAM site. So only pick one of the one of the listings here. And each one, it's going to, I promise you, we'll put the whole SAM site down. So one is enabled, meaning it will shoot and team, which team it is part of. So if you're flying with as team two, you won't get shot at. If you're flying as something else in teams two, it will engage you. So let's add a SAM site right in the center of the bullseye here. Right here. Now, so that takes care of that. And the next thing I want to show you, this is uh, this is new, photo real object. So what the guys at uh, FSX at War did, they actually went and created some empty targets. And those empty targets are blowable. Blowable, is that, I don't think that's a word. These are actually uh, shapes. And if you look here, we have a uh, number of shapes. We have circle. We have R for rectangle and S for square. And if you look at the dimensions, uh, I would I would suspect that the these are in meters. So that would be uh, a circle is three, is three meters, which is nine feet, and then uh, six meters, eighteen feet, and ten meters, thirty feet, approximately. So what it is is it actually puts uh, a uh, target that's destroyable on top of a photo reel. So what that means is that I can put one of those anywhere and if you put a bomb on it, it will explode and have a, a nice explosion effect. Now, I, th I believe that uh, once they create photo reel object, you may have a whole list of objects that you can put just about anywhere that are destroyable. So for example, here, I can make this uh, area destroyable. So that uh, I'll pick a, uh, a six foot radio here and I'll put it right on here. So now I now have destroyable our uh, target here and in that bullseye here. And I could go and pick just about anything. So if I pick where there's population here, just to give you an example, like this house here, I could go and take, okay, I'm going to take a small rectangle and target this house here. And that's how that basically works. So now when you go and bomb this house here, it will actually create, it will actually uh, uh, make it explode. So now there's one thing that, it hap that happens once you save TPS files. Once you save the TPS file, it will pick the first six targets and create waypoints. Uh, it will create the GPS pre-briefed uh, targets in an MU. So these targets I just put in would be part of an MU. So my advice to you is that if you want to have some photo real target like this, make them first. So this way it will actually put those into the pre-briefed in your uh, in your aircraft manager, you can load DMU that it creates, and we'll take a look at that. So now, as indicated, I was going to actually delete them, but I can't. So what I can do is I can clear, let me clear all waypoints, and now that we know how to do this, I'm going to add a photo real target here, and this neighborhood's having a bad day today and a full rear here. So I got two of them here. So now I will save the TPS file and I will call it, notice where it puts it. It puts it in your mission folder and the TPS folder. So where, wherever you installed your CCP, I installed mine in FSX at war, FSX war folder. So it's mission TPS, it creates a TPS file. We'll call it, uh, call it two targets. Obviously, you would put something more meaningful because you can reuse those TPS files in this MU. So I uh, save it. Do you want to edit? So you could say no here and go directly and get the file. But I want to show you that the interface that was created for this. 
there's actually a text editor here that was created for you and if you look at the, these blocks here what they've done is they created the airplanes when you install CCP it creates airplanes in your airplane folder with those objects that are destroyable so you can call them up by name and create uh, those those target blocks now if you watch my my video on TPS you, you understand how how all this works so in this case here we have two targets so let's go into uh, the actual folder and take a look so in mission folder under TPS I have two targets I have this target here th that's uh, the TPS file that we just looked at and I have an MU now if you're familiar with MU you go into your flight simulator and this is the MU section where you have all kinds of information saved frequencies uh, navigation points, countermeasures, setups, waypoint sequences, and here you have pre-brief uh, targets and programs. So you got your programming for the different uh, programming mode, uh, harm pre-brief targets, and here is GPS pre-brief target, and these here are your harpoon modes that you can configure ahead of time. So in this case here, notice that there's no targets. It's all that long as zero, 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 zero. So you can go and load DMU that we created, right? If I go to DFSX War, and we go to Mission and TPS and load that MU that we just created from CCP. If you look, those two targets just got loaded, and there's the GPS coordinates that were loaded in the MU. Now all you would have to do is save the aircraft and then those two pre-brief GPS targets are available to you when you fly. So that's pretty cool stuff. Now with that being said, if I had one one thing, if you if you guys from FSX at war are watching, one thing that would be really cool is if we had the ability to actually edit what we put in here or delete an entry. If, I, if we change our mind instead of having to clear them all, that would be really useful. And uh, if once you, if you put the capability in, what, we, what would be really nice is the ability to uh, actually load up a TPS file and uh, be able to edit it in here and then create an MU from it, maybe. So anyway, it's just some suggestion, but it's a great feature. And like I said, this one is a feature that deals with TPS files and it is not loaded with your CCP so you have to load that from within your simulator uh, if you watch my TPS video you'll see how to load a TPS file I just showed you how to do DMU you load a TPS file and you, you can blow up those two houses so that is it for the actual tack back portion of the CCP the next topic we're going to tackle is, cr is uh, how to start CCP in, uh, in multiplayer mode. I won't bother with the single mode because that's the easy one. You just select single session and start it. So hang in there. We're almost done with this video. Well, the next uh, next topic we're covering is starting it up in multiplayer okay, mode. Okay, so we started uh, my multiplayer session and uh, my friend Skyspin is going to join us on the server as well. And then we're going to initiate our multiplayer uh, session with CCP and have uh, both Skyspin and I join in on the carrier itself. So we're both getting into the multiplayer session. First thing we're going to do once we're all in, uh, I'm going to start uh, by getting my CCP going. Okay, CCP loads up. So what you want to do is select server mode, leave the IP as 000 because you're the one hosting and leave the ports alone. If you use something different, then make sure that whoever's connecting to you knows those ports. And then you click on validate this choice. Now we'll use the formation that we've used before. So it's a little bit different here. You go to add formation, select our formation that we had before, the Nimix formation, leaving their heading. And I'll make sure to give us plenty of time here. So I'm going to set the time to 
12, uh, let's see, 20. Set the time to 12.20, and now I need to add the formation to FSX. Now the formation is in FSX. We want to start in a carrier, so we click on Start on Carrier, and pick our position. I'm going to pick position 3, and I'm going to have Skyspin join us on position 5 so we can see him in front of us. Click on Validate Choice. So now we're essentially ready to go, and everything should be in the monitor here. Now, this here, in order to run the multiplier session in the, uh, with the CCP, you need to give it a, they call it file sharing name. It's basically a session name. And you will see how that shows up on the client side. So I'm going to call it blue zone. And I'll click start server. But notice before I click start server, this, I have checked start on the carrier. And it says in position three. So start server. And I already used that name, so it's asking me if I want to replace it. Sure thing. And next thing, same same thing as usual. Click on Connect to FSX. Waiting for the green square saying that uh, connected to FSX. Now the stuff is loading up. And boom, I'm on the carrier. So now my friend Sky Spin is going to join us. He's going to go through his client uh, connection. And once he's done with his client connection, he should show up uh, right in front of us in the uh, parking spot 5. Okay, Sky's been graciously agreed to record uh, this portion for us, so we'll do the client side. So you click on the client mode, and then you validate your choice. Then you want to go into the boat section, because that's where you're going to be connecting to the client. So go to add formation. Now it will show up with the IP address. You just want to look at the session available, you connect to it, and then you'll see blue zone. Just select it and then uh, join that session. Now the next step is to choose which position you want to join on a carrier. And he's picking number five as we pre-agreed. Pre and now that uh, he's there, it goes to the monitor. Same process, connect to FSX. Make sure you have your join on a carrier checked at the bottom. Once you have the green square, it should join you onto the carrier. There he goes, he's on the carrier. And that's all there is to it. So I hope this video was interesting to you. Uh, I know it's a long one, but there's so much to cover, I couldn't make it any shorter. So uh, if you like my video, please subscribe and click like. It's been a blast. Until then, uh, have fun and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.